Thank you for having me tonight. My name is Caitlin Shields. I'm from Mitchell Brantman. Um, I've been with Mitchell Brantman for coming on to 10 years now. I started off as a cadet um, when we were doing on screen 2D takeoff for quantity measurement, and we've done a lot of R&D to get where we are today, which is at the point where we can say that we're doing 5D quantity um, surveying. Um, so if everyone knows what 3D is, um, which is BIM, Building Information Modelling, um, people know a little bit about 4D, which is the time aspect of BIM, and what I'm going to share with you today is the 5D side of things, so building cost into 3D models. Um, I do want to start with, is everyone familiar with the concept of BIM, Building Information Modelling? Yep, cool, so I'll skip over that slide. And what I want to share with you today is um, cost certainty versus uncertainty. So I want to show you a case study of a project we, we did where we used a 3D model and how it could have been used in 2D for the uncertain things. So it was a really great project to use, it happened quite organically just across the river. Um, 5D methodology and lean construction, so how the modern day QS works um, and how that fits in with lean construction and delivering lean projects. And then a couple of examples of that. And then I want to share with you the number one 5D deliverable which is changing how a QS is working in today's industry um, and that benefits lean construction definitely. So if we start off with this case study of cost certainty versus uncertainty, um, I want to share with you the River Quay, which is just across the river here at South Bank. Um, it's a boutique set of restaurants. Um, and what you're seeing up on the screen is, on the top is a federated model. So it's actually a mix of the three models down below, which is an architectural, mechanical and structural model. Um, the great thing about this project was everything BIM that happened on this project happened organically. It was not mandated by the client and it certainly wasn't mandated by government. As we know in Australia, it's not. Um, we just discovered that the architect was using a model, the structural engineer was using a model. We were obviously interested in 3D models, so we decided for the benefit of the project and for the design team itself actually, um, let's use these models to the best of our capabilities. So as you can see, visually models are quite beneficial to the team. Straight off the bat we understood the project. Structural steel in particular for this project was quite unique and quite complex. As you'll see in this roof structure, it's a 12 metre cantilever of the roof. Um, so measuring that off of 2D would have been quite cumbersome um, and probably a bit confusing to read off of 2D plans and elevations. So using that model in the cost side of things in the design phase was very beneficial for us as cost planners. And as you see, if we get out to site, when we get out to site, it looks a lot like how the model did about a year ago when we were measuring the thing. So it is a benefit in itself for visuals. Um, we took that a step further and one of the greatest stories about this project is the fact that the subcontractor or the steel fabricator found out that there was models involved in this project. They asked for it. So the 3D model of the structure was handed over to the subcontractor. Um, where typically a 3D model would be turned down to 2D drawings, handed to the fabricator and built up in 3D again. This was transferred over quite seamlessly. What we saw in the numbers was quite beneficial to the project in the fact that in a project that had 321 claims and 27%, which represented 27% of the contract value, only five of those were from this steel fabricator and that represented 2% of the contract value. So where we used models, there was very minimal change to the project. So you can see in the numbers alone, it's quite beneficial to use. So how QSs work in this world? Um, I just want to take you through a graphic of our workflow and how we work nowadays. Um, if you'll follow along the bottom of this graphic, we're following along the design phases of um, construction, so design, pre-construction and construction. And then the typical um, deliverables we would do across those platforms. So with models we're working off of different levels of development or levels of detail. Um, this graphic shows a lot 100, 200 and 300. So obviously as we progress we get a lot more detail involved. If we start at the LOD 100, this is more of a schematic model, it's very basic, very visual, which is beneficial for the client. Um, not too much data involved at that point. What we can get out of it, we use quite well with estimating um, and using functional efficiencies, uh, but not too much actual quantitative data. 
In LOD 200, we're getting a little bit more information. So things like basic walls, basic roofs. What we get out of it as cost planners is things like general areas of those elements. And again, for the cost plan that we deliver at that point in time, it's perfect for what we need. Bringing that up into LOD 300 and we're getting a lot of detail at that point in time. So things where in a LOD 200 a wall would just be basic wall and 10 square metres. Now we have the framing, the insulation, the cladding on the outside and material specifications and all the data that comes with that information wise and quantity wise. So how we use that for our deliverables is down in LOD 100 we work the concept so we, we leverage off the areas that we can use um, and I'll show you an example of that next. It's in these two areas here that we get a great benefit out of the models. So everything that has a quantity that we can attach to, um, we start to create a link. And this is where we start to build our living cost plan is that a quantity that comes from a piece of wall into a rate into our cost plan can be revised over and over again. And I'll show you an example of that as well. As we move towards um, tender and construction, obviously there's a lot of detail involved in those as well. So we're starting to build up bill of quantities. Um, obviously very, very um, detailed quantities off of those. And there's a lot of information we find from those models as well. So an example of this is if we go back to the LOD 100 model, a schematic model or a SketchUp model, um, again, it's very visual. We can see what the project is like, so we get to understand what the project might look like and might cost. Um, but all we might really get out of it is some basic areas. From that, as quantity surveyors, we can do a lot with that information. So what I want to take you through is an example of um, using our functional efficiency to work the concept. This demonstration here, if you can read the numbers, um, is a target project which we've measured. It's a residential unit development and it's built up of a number of different areas. So residential area worked back to a per unit area, common area and car park area. When you multiply those areas out by a rate per square metre, we get a project value of $55.8 million. So that's our starting point if we're given a LOD 100 model. That's where we begin to start. Um, I should mention how we're also changing as quantity surveyors is in the traditional world where we'd sit for two weeks and measure areas and then for the last couple of days tweak the rates and tweak the, prost, the cost of the project. Now we're spending three days getting quantities and the rest of the time is on analysis, working the functional efficiency. So we're flipping it on its, on its head and we're able to do more of these scenarios. So what we would do in this scenario is line up about eight different projects that are of comparable development size or likeness. And what we find in the functional efficiency of it is that residential area shows that our target project is quite efficient. It's 58 square metres per unit as opposed to the average of 62. The car park area is very efficient at 20 square metres as opposed to the 32 average benchmark. But our common areas are 28 square metres versus the average of 15 square metres. So that's your, your common areas like your walkways, corridors, lift and stair spaces. Um, they're things that don't really reflect in a sale of a project. So if we can make them as efficient as possible, it's beneficial to the project. So working that scenario and just focusing in on that common area per unit, if we make our target project um, a smaller common area per unit, and we multiply that out by the rate, we get a project value of $50.3 million. So just playing with those functional areas and working that efficiency, we're saving um, quite big numbers on a project um, very early on in the stage where it's obviously easier and cheaper to make decisions. Does that all make sense so far? Great. I'm now going to show you a movie of how we use a LOD 200. So obviously this is the next level of detail where we're getting um, basic areas and quantities and how we use that for our cost plan. So I'll just play that. Okay, so what we're seeing here is Costex, which is our software platform that we use in estimating. Um, you can obviously see the model, spin the model around and interrogate the model. So I'm pulling apart the precast walls in this scenario. And what you can see if we dig into the object properties is some basic areas of volume, um, length even. 
And what we do with that is what we call mapping. And for every piece of model that has a piece of information that we want out of it, we start to map it through. And as you'll see down the left-hand side, where there was no dimensions or quantities, we start to propagate with that with what we've extracted from the model. So in this scenario, we've built it up elementally and pulled everything we can from that model. And that happens quite rapidly. I think that's at one and a half speed, so not, not too far from the truth of what we see in our office. What's great about Costex is it does show, if you click on a quantity, it'll isolate that in the screen for you. So again, visually, we're understanding the building a lot more than we would in a, in a plan or elevation scenario. Over in the workbook, what we do is build those quantities, multiply them by a rate, and we start to build up our cost plan. What's really great about Costex is anything green in this scenario is live linked. It's been pulled from the model. So I can say, where did that quantity come from? Take me back to the model and show me where it is. So it's quite a transparent program. Um, we send this out to our clients so they can see where our costs are lying. Um, and it's a great benefit um, to seeing how the models work against our quantities. So this example is um, about a LOD 300 to 400 model, probably closer to a LOD 400. Um, this is where we've seen the designers put in or model reinforcement bars. So they're putting a lot of detail into a model where we'd normally see concrete with a reinforcement factor. Um, for this project in particular, we measured out every stick of reinforcement, multiplied it by a weight, multiplied it by a rate to follow the cost through. What we could then do for the client, and again, once it's linked, we can revision it as many times as we want. It's now a living cost plan. Um, and we did. Every time a new model came through, we could follow where the changes in the reinforcement were. Right down to the kilogram if we wanted to. So it's very detailed. Again, talking about transparency and how we send out our cost plans now. Um, this is an example of what a typical bill of quantity would look like. So concrete, 456 cubic metres. That's all the information traditionally you would see in a bill of quantities. What we're able to do now with the software and the technology that we have is actually release to, um, in a viewer package, everything. So this 456 cubic metres is actually made up of these line items. So the different sizes of columns that build this up. Um, and again, everything that's green, you can take back to the model and show the person where that quantity lies. So now I want to share with you the number one 5D deliverable. Um, and I've alluded to it previously. It's what we call revisioning. Um, so again, in that LOD 200, 300 space, as soon as we can attach a quantity from a model to a rate um, and it begins a link, we can start our living cost plan. This makes a quantity surveyor um, be able to break from traditional bounds of only doing a cost plan at a certain design phase. So say you finish CD, we only do a um, cost plan then. Once we get a link, we can do cost plans as many times as we want because we have that link. This demonstration here is the Sunshine Coast University Hospital, which we did with Lendlease. Um, our deliverable in this scenario was a bill of quantities for the structural package. Um, and right up until the time that we released it to tenders, we were getting models every two weeks. So we were doing two weekly revisions right up until the point. And again, the benefit of that is something that's going out to tender, rather than being frozen six weeks prior, we're actually getting as late as the, the, late, the data that's the latest it possibly can be before the tender season. It. So again, we're getting something that's as efficient as it can be and as accurate as it can be as well. So I'll play that for you. Um, so again in Costex, we're at about the point where we've done one revision and what I'm doing is going to lay over another model. Um, so the first thing I want to do is visually see what's changed and we can do that in Costex by laying them over each other. And what you'll see here is this is a two weekly revision um, yellow means something's changed, blue means something's the same, red is deleted and green is new. So as you can see on a very large project a lot was changing every couple of weeks. And we could track it because of this technology. Um, it does nothing except show a visual, so as a cost planner I knew where to expect the numbers to change. We then remap it, so this is where the actual quantities come out of the model back into our list of dimensions. Um, and that refills the quantities again to the latest design. 
we then do, because everything's linked again, the workbook is already pre-filled. Um, and what we can show, again being transparent, is the changes. So in this screenshot here we're showing the previous quantity, the current quantity and where the difference lies. So we can track it every time, show our client, show the design team, were they expecting those changes or what's happening there and really interrogate what's going on on the project. So I'll leave you with that, is that BIM enables leaner buildings by being able to show um, early cost decisions. We're making buildings as efficient as we can be right up at the start. Uh, we're being transparent about our money and our quantities. We're releasing anything you saw tonight as a viewer package and we're showing that to as many people as we can because the more transparent we are, the better the result we're going to get because everyone's transparent and honest. And we're rehearsing construction. Every time we rerun those revisions, we're getting more closer to the building, we're understanding it a little bit further, and we're practicing it before anything troublesome might happen out on site. And a 5D QS creates cost certainty by applying the wisdom, intelli intelligence, and technology that we've gained over our experiences. So I'll leave you with that. Thank you.